Okay, everyone, for, so for day one for our very first lesson, again, this might be a little bit slow if you've already got some experience in HTML and such, but if you've never done this before, this will be a brand new world. And we're going to be talking about HTML and CSS and JavaScript. Programming languages. Technically not programming languages, but we'll call them programming languages. And we can use any variety of software to write HTML. HTML was invented in about 1989, so it's 25 years old. The web, the World Wide Web, Facebook and all of that stuff runs on HTML, basically. And anyone can create and write HTML documents and projects and apps. Uh, we have a variety of software that will let us write our apps. Uh, they all have their pros and cons. But we're going to use, on Windows, we're going to use this free, simple, robust, speedy app uh, called Notepad++. I'll mention the Mac version in a moment. But on, on our Windows computers here, if you go to the Start menu and start typing Notepad, you'll see Notepad++. Not Notepad. We don't want to use Notepad. We want to use Notepad++. If, you're, if you've got a Windows computer at home, this is not built in. You'll have to download it. Just search Notepad++. It'll take you to like notepad.org or something. You can download and install it. It's free. It will let us write our HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. There's plenty of other software out there to do this. We can use Sublime Text. We can use Eclipse. We can use uh, Text Wrangler, Text Edit, etc., 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 brackets, etc., etc. We're going to use Notepad++ in this class just to write our code. Um, it's a free download. If you have a Mac, at home, what you want is software called Text Wrangler. Well, that's the one I'm recommending. There's brackets, sublime text, etc., etc., etc. Text Wrangler on the Mac, Notepad++ on Windows. So on our computers here, go to the Start menu, click Start, click Note, start typing Notepad. Plus plus and turn on the Notepad++ plus plus or launch the Notepad++ plus plus app software. You may get a pop-up about updates. Just click Cancel. <coughs> Did everyone get Notepad++ plus plus launched? <coughs> So Notepad++ will let us edit code, and in some senses it might be, if you're used to other software, other IDEs, it might be too limiting. If, you, you're, if you're used to Visual Studio or Eclipse or other software where you see your code and the representation of it compiled and all of that, this might be too limited for you. But I think for a beginning class this is perfect. Um, we get some uh, updates here about what's new on version 6.7.8.1. Don't worry. Go to File, New. File menu, New. Again, I'm, I've started recording, so all that I'm talking about and showing on my screen here will be available on the videos. That's why you want to send me an email to be able to access this. File, New. File menu, Save As. How many of you today brought a USB drive? If you didn't bring one, that's okay. What we're creating today is not so mission critical that you're going to kick yourself if you don't take it with you. But if you brought a USB drive, you can plug into the computer. And we're going to save this. If you didn't bring a USB drive, that's okay. Just we'll save it to the desktop. You can email it to yourself at the end of the day or upload it to Dropbox or something. But let's go to File, Save As. I plugged in my USB drive, so I'm going to find it on Computer. And there's my drive right there. And I'm going to make a folder. You can make a folder. And I'll just call this Android 1. On my USB drive, I'm creating a new folder for this class, Android 1, and it asks for a file name. We will call this 
uh, September 8. The name doesn't quite matter, but I'm just naming it something today's name so that I remember that I worked on it today. But what does matter, save as type, we're going to be writing HTML code. So on save as type, let's make sure that we change the save as type to hypertext markup language, HTML. If you've heard of HTML before but never knew what it stood for, there it is, hypertext markup language. So I'll explain what that all means, of course, little by little. But again, we're not going to get into every single detail of every single concept in these classes. There's still not enough time, even in 12 weeks. So make sure you've selected hypertext markup language. I've got today's date. Notice it changed it to September 8th.html. And I'm saving it to my Android One folder on my flash drive. You can save it to your desktop if you didn't bring a USB drive today. So click Save. So HTML is technically not a programming language, it's a markup language. And we'll see what that means in a moment. But it was basically developed by someone named Tim Berners-Lee. He was in Europe, a student in Europe, I believe. And he developed in 1989 a language to link documents together. So he was at a university and there was a document, you know, a very wordy, nerdy document, and there could have been some concept here that could have required more explanation. So then if you clicked on that word, it would then link you to another document with more information on that that you clicked on. That's hypertext markup language, a hyperlink hypertext, some text that you can click on to go to another document. And today, 25 years later, duh, obviously, links. I click on this thing on Facebook and it takes me to YouTube. I click on that video, it takes me to another cat video. I click on this, I go out there, links. That's what the web is. But basically, 1989, HTML was developed and published, and that's what uh, has changed the world, literally. HTML language has changed the world. Look at how we connect with friends and family, commerce, banks, apps. Um, literally nations have changed because of the web and the internet. Remember the Arab Spring, people changing, protesting their governments, changing their nations, all the way from that level down to sharing the latest cat picture. HTML, the web, and that's what we're gonna write right now. We're gonna write some HTML code. And so this language has evolved since 1989, and currently we're using HTML5, the latest version. And so if you're an old hand at writing HTML, you might have heard of something called the doc type. If you're brand new to this, our very first line here, we have to explain what kind of document this is. Because our document is going to be rendered, it's going to be parsed, it's going to be translated into something. So we have to explain on the very first line, this is an HTML document, an HTML5 document. So we're going to use tags in HTML, and basically a tag is in this format. We have the less than symbol, which is shift comma. On your keyboard, you have a comma, it's next to the letter M, and if you shift comma, you get the left angle bracket, or the less than, and then we want the greater than, so less than, greater than. We're going to use this over and over and over. Inside of these angle brackets, we have tags. And we're going to tag things in our document. The first thing we're going to tag is that this is an HTML5 document. And this is a unique tag here. But then we'll write the exclamation point, which is Shift-1, D-O-C-T-Y-P-E, no spaces there. Exclamation point doc type. No space. And then a space. Notice I'm in the angle brackets. I'm inside the less than the greater than. I'm inside of that tag. HTML. Here I'm saying everything that follows is an HTML5 compliant document. And again, if you're an old hand at this, you remember doc type HTML slash slash dash 
en backslash dtd uh, html blah 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 blah. In the old days you had to really really explain. This is an html 4.01 document. This is an xhtml 1.1 document in English. Well nowadays much simpler. That means html. html5, the latest standard. At the end of the line, see where my cursor is, at the end of the line press enter. We'll start the angle brackets again. I'm going to start to use shorthand early on because I'm not going to say over and over. Less than, blah blah blah, greater than. I'm going to start saying tags as a shorthand. Angle brackets, less than, greater than, a tag. I'm going to write the HTML tag. The angle brackets and inside what kind of tag? The HTML tag. At the end of the line, press enter a couple of times. And we're going to write that HTML tag again. But we're going to mark that between here and here, everything in the middle is our website, our web app. We're going to mark between those two HTML tags that our whole project exists. So then, what actually what we need on line four here is a slash, not a backslash, a slash, which is the, which is next, which is uh, below the question mark, next to shift on the right side. Angle bracket slash HTML angle bracket, less than slash HTML greater than. This pair of tags here will tell eventually the web browser or the person visiting this website that this is a website, an HTML website, web project. And notice it highlighted for me, purple, and there's this little red <coughs> line here connecting it, and this is red here and red here. If you don't see those colors, maybe you clicked over here, but if you click on the tag, it highlights to tell you there's its pair. Something that basic is amazing. Because once we deal with a project that is 300 lines long, 3,000 lines long, we want to know where does this code start and where does it end. Notepad++ gives us that ability, code highlighting. It tells you this is this chunk of code, and if I had written something wrong, perhaps, it'll give me hints, because notice if I click there and nothing highlights, it's wrong. You also see a little squiggly line a moment ago. Something was wrong. <coughs> Something was wrong. So simple code color coding is very valuable when you're doing any kind of coding. And that's one of the many features of something like Notepad. But basically here we've started to define what kind of document do we have? And we're gonna say everything between these HTML tags will be my website. So go back inside of the two HTML tags, inside of that on line 3, notice we can intelligently talk about our code by saying, let's go to line 7 and do this. We're going to have line numbers. Go to line 3 and press tab on the keyboard, and then we will write the head tag, so that means the angle brackets, head. And 98% of all HTML tags have a pair. So press enter a couple of times after head, line 5. We will write the closing head tag. We have the opening head tag, the closing head tag. The opening HTML tag, the closing HTML tag. And 98% of HTML code will be like that, a pair. Opening tag, closing tag. A few of the 2% for example, is the doc type. That one does not have a pair. <laughs> so don't worry about that. We have no pair for doc type. We're going to use pairs of tags almost everywhere. Enter on the next line, line 6, and then we'll write the body tag. Now, 
the way I write code and the way that I teach it is whenever there's a pair of something, I usually close the pair as soon as I can and then fill in the details. What I mean by that is we're seeing that we've got angle bracket, text, angle bracket. So I might be tempted to then write, okay, angle bracket slash body. And I might forget to type that closing angle bracket, and that could break my code. So my habit is whenever possible, I try to write the pair of things right there, opening and closing, and then fill in the detail. Because yes, unfortunately, one wrong character could break the whole project. Not one command or one line, one character. A missing slash, a missing quote especially, missing angle bracket could break the whole project. And if it's something early on in the code, it'll break the whole, you know, 10 pages of our app. So I get in the habit and I teach to complete the, complete the pair as soon as I can, and then fill in the details. Actually, I wanted a space there. I've got, line, I've got nine lines so far. And technically, that is a fully formed and compliant HTML document. We have some details to fill in, of course, but that's a web page. This is learning to crawl before we can walk, before we can run. And again, for some of you, this might be uh, obvious and you've taken classes and such, but for some of us, this is brand new. Let's um, just to see what we've got so far. We still got stuff to do, but just to see what this looks like. Uh, let's um, inside of body here. Let's add a tab, number seven, line seven. And let's write the classic "Hello World." Tradition is that whenever you learn a brand new programming or scripting language, markup language, one of the first things you want to do is make the project say "Hello World." It's been tradition for decades. So we'll follow that tradition. We'll make it say hello world, just like everyone before us. And the way this will work is we're going to write some code, we're going to save our work, and we're going to render the code. Notepad++ is currently telling me this has not been saved yet. What is this thing anyway? Youngsters. Know what that is. Floppy disk. Floppy disk. 3.5, 1.44 megabyte floppy disk, yes. Uh, if you are new to computers and such, this archaic thing is a floppy disk. We used to save our information on it. But this is telling us that this has not been saved yet. So click this floppy up here, or go to File, Save, or Control S. Save your work becomes blue. We're going to need to remember to save our work in Notepad before we can see what it actually looks like. That's a big mistake that people often make. You, you edited the code, you looked at it ten times, why doesn't it run? You didn't save it. Remember to save. If you have a red floppy disk over here, you haven't saved it yet. Well, this is a web page. But to actually see the web page, we need to see it in a web browser. <laughs> so here in Notepad++, at the top menu we have Run, and we have some web browsers. I'm just going to select Firefox because it's the first one on the list, but you can select any one you want. Go to Run, Menu, Launch in Firefox. There we go, the web browser took my code, rendered it, and showed it to me something more human readable. Hello world. So if you've never done web design before, pat yourself on the back, you're a web designer now. So these nine lines, well, eight if we take out that space, nine lines of code is technically enough for a basic web page. And from here we're going to go, obviously, much further to create a more advanced project. But we want to get these basics down first, especially for us that are new. So does this work for everyone? Did anyone need a little help? Okay, let's back up. 
go back to our code. We'll go to line 4. Tab into line 4. In head, we're going to add a tag. I'm going to add a tag uh, called um, title. And this also has a pair. So notice my my habit is that I'm uh, writing the tag and then it's pair. I usually give a little space in between. Title, T-I-T-L-E. Make sure you've got the closing tag preceded with a slash, not a backslash. A backslash is this one. It leans back. This is a slash. It leans forward. And notice if it's the wrong slash, it doesn't highlight properly. If you've got valid code, oftentimes in Notepad++ it's blue. We've got title. Inside of title, let's write um, the name of this class, Android Apps Dev with HTML5. Notice all of these HTML tags, I'm writing them lowercase. That's HTML5 compliant. If you've had experience in older versions of HTML, you could mix your cases, and oftentimes, perhaps in the older days, you used capital letters for your code. Modern HTML5 is all lowercase. So notice all my code is lowercase. And then the human readable stuff is normal mixed case. I get in the habit of lowercase code. Well, I want to see what this looks like. So our, our dance is going to be that we write code, we save it, and we run it. So I've written some code. Remember to save it. You can go back to Run, Launch Firefox, or just refresh your web browser if it's still open. But run, Launch in Firefox, pops up again. Wait a minute, I wrote Android Apps Dev with HTML5, I don't see it here. Where is it? There it is. In the tab. In the tab of the web browser. <coughs> Previously I didn't write anything, so it just gave me the file name. But now that I wrote the title tag in the head section, it showed it in the title bar, the tab up there. So many things in this head section is go are going to be meta content content beyond the main body of the document, everything visible in the main part of the web browser, or when we get this to be an app, in the main screen of the app is in body, and the things beyond that, like the title, will be in the head and other features. So we've got the title tag up here, and inside of body, we've got some text. I'm going to back up and I'm going to give myself actually a new line before number four. I actually want a little bit of code before title. Tab. Now these tabs that I'm writing are technically not necessary. HTML is perfectly happy for your whole project to be on one long line that goes on and on and on, a thousand characters off to the right. HTML will work if it's all on a line. Here we're dividing it into multiple lines for us, for our readability. I want to be able to read this easily, so I'm separating things with lines and tabs. I have this section of head and this section of body, and I've tabbed in, I've indented, this content that relates to that section. So that is technically not necessary for you to tab, but I'm tabbing to read it. And this time I'll add the meta tag. Meta. And this is one of the ones that does not have a pair. Meta. M-E-T-A. Meta. It does not have a pair. 
This one works a little bit differently. Notice we have opening tag, closing tag, opening, closing, etc. This one's going to work differently in that the details, the properties of the particular tab, of the particular tag, are in the tag. Like this. Write the meta tag and then back your cursor up so that it's inside of the, right after the A, inside of the angle bracket, and then press space. We're going to write what we need to write inside of the tag here. These are properties of the tag. And this property is one called C-H-A-R-S-E-T. Some people pronounce it char set, but the correct way is car set. Car set, char set equals. What we're about to say here is what character set can we use in this document? Because projects, web apps, websites, apps can be in English, in Spanish, in Italian, in Hebrew, in Japanese, in Russian. Cyrillic, etc., etc., etc. So we're saying, what characters can we use? What character set? Car set equals. Then we will do the quote symbol, the, the double quote here, which is shift apostrophe. It's next to enter. And this is why I say I do the pairs. Because right now, if we write whatever we're going to write, and we didn't write the ending quote. You see how everything turned purple? That quote was never ended, and therefore that would break the whole app. That one character. So I'm going to write the quote, and then I'm going to write the ending quote. <coughs> that goes back to normal. And inside the quote, I can then say what character sets to you. So if there's ever going to be pairs, I finish the pair and then write the details. And the detail within these quotes, UTF-8. Um, this is basically saying we're using pretty much, for all intents and purposes, all the characters, possible characters, English, characters, Spanish, Cyrillic, Hebrew, Japanese, etc. So we will be able to use all of these characters from all of these languages throughout the world. Um, unfortunately, I don't believe we will be able to use emoji here. I believe we need to use UTF-16, maybe, or maybe 32. I forget which one. But here we're going to be able to use all the normal characters, you know, the, like in Spanish, the the O with the accent mark, or uh, you know the, the yen symbol, or um, a little O with two dots. All of these special characters. If we uh, if we save our work at this point and just get in the habit of saving it and running it, or launching it, sometimes I'll say launch it, save it, run it, launch in Firefox. Nothing really changed, but nothing should have broken. If it doesn't look like before, you might have misspelled something. Even though this is red, it doesn't mean it's wrong, it's just that it's color coding our code for different purposes. And here it recognizes that this is a property of the meta tag. If it was, the, if that wasn't spelled right, notice how that is black. It's not the right color. So it doesn't mean that if your code is red, it's wrong. It just means that there's different elements that are color coded differently. They mean different things. As we continue to use Notepad, we'll kind of memorize the color coding. But this is what we've got so far. Question. Question. Nope. Make sure that your title tag is inside of the head section. 
If it's inside of the body section, that's why it would show up in the body. We're going to take a break soon, so we'll, we'll check that out in just a moment. But uh, we're going to use over and over the concept of marking our code. That's the ML in HTML. We're marking between here and here is the title. Between here and here is the body. Between here and here is the whole HTML project. That's the markup part, a markup language. We didn't technically do any markup to Hello World, but it did show up properly in the web browser. Let's go back to line 10, and eventually perhaps your line numbers don't quite line up with mine. That's okay. If they don't line up exactly, just try to find the section I'm talking about, but I'm on line 10. And what I'm going to do here is mark that Hello World. I want that to be big and bold and important looking. So I'm going to add this tag that will do that. I'm going to start, I'm going to write it this way. Before the Hello World, I will write the H1 tag. That's a number one, not an L. H1. And I want to finish marking that this is h1 at the end of that same line, right? Open close angle brackets slash h1. I've marked that this is heading one. I haven't told you what heading one is yet, but go ahead and save it and run it and see how it looks like in the web browser. See how it renders. See how it translates. h1 slash h1. Remember to save. If you wrote this properly, H1 tag then renders the text inside of it big and bold and important looking. That's what heading one does. Visually, it does one thing, and then semantically, it does something else, which I'll talk about later. But that's big and bold heading one. You might ask, well, why did we, do we have to write h1 on the same line as we wrote hello world? No. This is what I'm saying about HTML not caring about tabs and spaces and all of that. This is the same as, you don't have to do this, but this is the same as this. Just like we saw title and everything else. That's the same. But sometimes you can put it on multiple lines and sometimes you can put it on single lines. It's up to you really. But what I do, my habit, is that if I've got something that really only needs one, that, it, that only has one thing to show, I might just display the, the tags on one line instead of multiple lines just to save me some, some bytes and some space and organization. But that's uh, a personal preference. line 11. We know this time we're going to write the h2 tag, so I'll complete the pair. Heading 2, heading 1. Well, if heading 1 is big and bold, h1, if heading 1 is big and bold, then heading 2 is probably twice as big and twice as bold, right? Let's write inside of heading 2, day 1. Save it and run it. And no, actually, heading 2 is not 2 times bigger or bold. It's the second level of importance. So think about it that way. Heading 1 is the most biggest, most important piece of content on the screen. Heading 2 is the second most important, second biggest heading 3, heading 4, etc. down to heading 6. So we're going to be talking about that tags have a purpose and a meaning. The purpose of the body tag is to display all of this content in the main part of the screen. The purpose of heading 1 is to show that this is a big, important heading. Um, and then the meaning also has to do with that. Well, what does it mean to the web browser? What does it mean to the app? It has a meaning.
And we might ask, well, why, is, why are these things default sizes and colors? We'll deal with styling this later, but it's all got a built-in default. So we've written a little bit of text. We can also add an image on the next line. We're going to start this off first with the P tag, and I'm going to break this up into two lines. The P tag. P for paragraph. I'm showing these headings and in a paragraph, and in this paragraph I'm going to display a picture and some text below the picture. This is why I broke it into multiple lines. Again, this I'm really only going to display one thing, so I've got it on one line. I'm going to display multiple things, so my habit is to put it on multiple lines. Paragraphs. tab into that paragraph and write our instructor. We're going to have we're going to show a picture of me in a moment from this class. Again, if you're used to other code editors, you might see your code and right next to it the result. This kind of code editor isn't like that. You write your code, and then you view your result. Your, you render your code. Um, if you like to use other code editors, great. Use it. But we're, in this class, we're going to use this code editor, Notepad++, with this process. So p tag, our instructor, it puts it on a new line. It's smaller. It's regular text. If you think about it a bit, if you look at your syllabus, this can be created, this can be recreated as a web page. The whole thing would be the HTML document. The whole thing would be the body. Body slash body. Then at the top here we've got some big bold text, second big, second biggest bold, and so forth. Heading one, heading two. We've got bullet points and other things that we can do. Then we've got regular text. This paragraph explaining what the class is about, that's a regular paragraph of text. So headings, paragraphs, images, bullet points, all of that, because all of this came from wanting to render documents on the computer back in 1989, and then being able to click on something here to show you another document. And so as I said, we also want to show an image. So after our instructor here, press enter, and we will write the image tag, which is IMG. So simply IMG. And the image tag does not have a pair. That's another one of these tags that does not have a pair. We've seen three so far. Doc type, meta, and image. And so just like the meta tag on line four, we need to add some properties. So inside of image, right after the G, add a space. Make sure you're in the angle bracket. If you write what we're about to write outside of it, it won't work. It's in the image tag. SRC. It should become red because it recognized it. It's a valid property. Just like line 4 equals quote end quote, just like meta. So oftentimes when we're dealing with a single self-contained tag, we add its properties like that. <coughs> this will display an image. Here we're saying, what's the source of the image? Where is the image? Where's, what's the file name and path of the image? Now if we had my document is being saved on my flash drive in my Android folder, right there. This document is being saved on my flash drive. And if I had a picture on that same folder, I could simply then type the name of the picture here into source. 
such as victor.jpg. But that won't work for us because there's no picture in that folder. That path is not correct. It's not pointing to the right picture. So I get a broken picture. Well, the cool thing is we can actually add a source here of a picture online. If we can get the, the path, the address of a picture, we can show it on our project. Even though our project has not been uploaded to the internet, it can still reach out to the internet and grab a picture. So let's grab a picture of me. Let's go to your web browser. Let's go to one of my websites here, vmcink.net. I'm in Firefox. In Firefox, I went to vmcink.net, vmcink.net. There's a little picture of me right there. vmcink.net. When you see my picture here, you can right-click it, copy image location, which is just the fancy name of the address of this picture on the internet. So if yours says something a little different, you're probably in a different web browser, but hopefully it says something about image location or image address or image URL. Copy image location, and if I go back to Notepad, and inside of the quotes, I can right-click paste, there's the address. I wasn't going to have you type that. HTTP colon slash slash blah 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 the So now save that and run it. And on your web page, you will see my picture. So I'm taking an address from any picture online and putting it in my image tag in the source. And there's my picture on your web page, on your web project. So I displayed my picture on the project. But over here, it looked like I, I have our instructor and I pressed enter and my idea was to have our instructor text and below the text my picture. But what it showed me in the browser is the text next to the picture. So the reason for that is because, as I said, HTML ignores tabs and spaces and enters. I can press 10 enters here, and those 10, will, 10 enters will not show up. So we can do this instead. After the after our instructor, we'll write the br tag, break. We had a line of text, and then we break the line, and then show the picture. So unless we tell it specifically, it won't do what we think we want. Enters don't mean anything, usually, in HTML and spaces and, and, and tabs. In certain cases they do, certain very important cases, but we'll get to those cases. So now if you save it and run it, you should see our instructor, break, and then the picture. So this is one of these tags that does not have a pair, simply br. There's the result. So now, we're going to take a break now. But here's your task before the break. Write my name right below that picture, and we'll take a break. We'll take a 10-minute break, 
until about 8, 11, and then we'll go on. Write my name right below that text, and then once that works, take a break.